Thank you for joining us on Synthesis Workshop. On today's Research Spotlight episode, we're joined by Catherine Z. Catherine earned bachelor's degrees in chemistry and chemical biology, as well as psychology from Cornell University. She then worked as a senior research support associate in the Chung Lab at MIT before coming to Columbia, where she's currently pursuing her PhD in the Rovis Group. And from there, I'll hand it over to you, Catherine. Thanks a lot for joining us to talk about your work. Hello, and thank you for joining me for this Synthesis Workshop presentation. My name is Catherine Z. I'm a fourth-year PhD candidate in the group of Thomas Law Robis at Columbia University, and I'm very excited to share our recent publication on orange light-driven CSP2, CSP3 coupling via spinford bitten metallophotoredox catalysis. So I'd like to start with a little bit of an intro into photoredox catalysis. So the prototypical photocatalyst in visible light photoredox, Rubipi, can be activated via a metal to ligand charge transfer upon irradiation with blue light to access the singlet excited state from the singlet ground state, followed by an intersystem crossing to the catalytically relevant triplet excited state. However, in order to bypass this energetically wasteful ISC process, which costs about 17 kcals per mole, our group has recently introduced a library of osmium-2 polypyridyl complexes that are amenable to spin for bedded excitation directly from the singlet ground state to the triplet excited state under deep red or near infrared radiation. And this is assisted by the spin orbit coupling around the osmium center of this photoredox catalyst. And these low energy methods furthermore have since been employed in a variety of catalytic reactions. In 2020, the Gianetti group showed directed SP2 aerolation with a red absorbing organic photocatalyst in combination with palladium. In 2022, the Winger group used a dual catalytic system to achieve aryl dehalogenation under low energy light. And also in 2022, our group showed that osmium-2 photoredox catalysis with red light can perform buckwald hartwig type CN cross couplings with reduced byproduct formation. And indeed, low energy light shows some market advantages over blue or visible light, including improved barrier penetration and functional group tolerance, as well as enhanced biological compatibility and organometallic compatibility. However, transformation that has remained elusive in the low energy paradigm is the metallophotoredox CSP2 CSP3 coupling. And to rationalize this limitation, we need to consider the redox windows of these photocatalysts. On the left, we have a visible light iridium 3 photocatalyst with a window of 2.58 volts, which is denoted as ET1. And then this is followed by Rubipi, which has a window of about 2.1 volts. And on the right is osmium tris by pyrazine, which has the greatest redox window of the osmium-2 complexes we synthesized at 1.83 volts for the redox window under deep red irradiation. However, if we consider the redox demands of the CSP2 CSP3 metallophoto redox coupling, we require an excited state photocatalyst reduction of at least 0.6 to 1.2 volts to oxidize either a sacrificial reductant or an electrophile and a photocatalyst oxidation of at least minus 1 to minus 1.2 volts to regenerate a nickel co-catalyst. And while the iridium-3 photocatalyst is capable of reaching these potentials, osmium-2 cannot. So in terms of redox windows, we can actually consider Rubipi to be a little bit closer to osmium-2 than iridium-3. We propose that there should be room to develop photocatalysts with wider redox windows while remaining in the low energy paradigm, and that's how this project began. So we turn to the Remweller equation to guide our photocatalyst design, and this equates the excited and ground state redox potentials of a photocatalyst with the vibrational zero-point energy, which is denoted as E0, and this E0 value is dependent upon the incident wavelength of absorption. And so we can tune the ground state potentials just by varying the ligand electronics. This is a very well-precedented step in catalyst design, but that typically just shifts the redox window without expanding it. And our other option was to change the value of E0, which, as I mentioned before, is influenced by the lambda max of absorption. And so by moving to a slightly higher energy paradigm within the low energy light framework, we thought that we might be able to design a photocatalyst that could achieve the transformations that we were interested in. Several years of work by a former postdoc in the Robus group, Dr. Eva Vendorova, and a former undergraduate student, Chen Shi Lin, as well as the support of collaborators at Bristol Myers Squibb, resulted in the development of iridium-3 centered photocatalysts that can undergo spin for bed and excitation under orange light irradiation. And importantly, we found that the redox windows of these photocatalysts are now theoretically amenable to the demands of CSP2-CSP3 cross-coupling. 
So in addition to this being a synthetically challenging problem, we are interested in CSP2, CSP3 couplings because of their medicinal relevance. So as this chart shows, the most common reactions in medicinal chemistry across 30 years have been primarily amide bond and suzuki Miura couplings. And the prevalence of viral bonds in drug candidates is a function of the bonds that we're able to make, but not necessarily indicative of the most medicinally relevant structures. And in fact, increasing the sp3 character of drug candidates has profound effects on oral bioavailability and solubility, as well as molecular shape diversity and protein ligand interactions. And the ratio of sp3 carbons in a molecule, known as the f-score, increases by about a third between the discovery and approval phases. So now that we have our orange light photocatalyst in hand, we sought to activate different alkyl radical precursors, both reductively and oxidatively, just to show the breadth of the reactions that we're able to access with this new photocatalyst library. So in the reductive direction, we selected Kotritsky salts as an alkyl radical reservoir. These were popularized by the Watson group, and they're very easy to synthesize as a simple condensation between triphenyl beryllium and an alpha primary or alpha secondary amine. And then this resulting Kotritsky salt can then be reduced to generate the alkyl radical plus the triphenylpyridine byproduct. And the reactivity and cross-coupling was reported, among others, by the Molander group in 2019, utilizing the organic photocatalyst for CZIPN and blue light irradiation to give the aerolated product shown here in nearly quantitative fields. So by changing the photocatalyst and light source from blue to orange, we were able to achieve 97% yield, which is very gratifying. And importantly, we found through our control studies that while the orange light photocatalyst is still reactive under blue light irradiation due to the singlet to singlet excitation band, the blue light photocatalyst, as we see in entry four, is not reactive under orange light, which shows that we are accessing new reactivity with the slow energy irradiation. And a side-by-side -side comparison of the photocatalyst used in this transformation shows that while the lambda max of absorption differs from blue to orange, so about 380 to 566 nanometers, the redox windows, denoted by ET1, are nearly identical. I then scoped out the reaction to probe the chemical space that we can access with orange light. I found that varying electron density on the aryl partner is tolerated from very electron poor to relatively electron rich, as well as heteroaryl scaffolds and ortho, meta, and para substitution. Drug like cores like this isoindolinone, which was provided by collaborators at BMS, were competent, as were aryl iodides. And we can also run this reaction on large scale at one millimole with excellent yields. And importantly, we were able to distinguish between orange and blue light reactivity with photosensitive functionality such as fluorinone. And on the Kotritsky salt side, branched alkyl and heterocyclic structures are tolerated, as are varying ring sizes such as the cycloheptol fragment and drug scaffolds such as mixilitine, which bears an alpha secondary amine. So having probed the reactivity of our photocatalyst and reductive activation of alkyl radicals, we then turned to oxidative activation and selected alkyl BF3K salts as a challenging but important scaffold for benzylic aerolation. So these are oxidized upon exposure to the photocatalyst to generate the benzylic radical, which then can be coupled into an aryl halide of our choice. The precedent for this work also comes from Molander and their seminal science paper, where they use visible light iridium photoredox to form these benzylate coupled bonds. So HTE performed by Dr. Candace Cho, one of our collaborators at BMS, identified promising conditions for this transformation, which then I reproduced on the bench in 81% yield to validate the hit. As we saw in the deaminative aerolation case, the orange light photoredox catalyst shows comparable yields under blue light, which is not the case for the blue light catalyst under orange, which is again shown in entry four. And a side-by-side -side comparison of the photocatalyst using the blue and orange light transformations shows that actually interestingly, while the orange light photocatalyst iridium four has an excited state reduction lower than what we would expect for the oxidation of the alkyl BF3K to the benzylic radical, we would expect about 1.1 volts and we're at about 0.84. These photocatalyst redox windows do have tails, i.e. they don't stop exactly at the measured value, they do tail out for a bit further. And our model BF3K, the paramethoxy benzyl, is fairly electron rich, which we propose makes the oxidation more facile. And so we performed a substrate scope on the BF3K aerolation as well, 
and again found good tolerance of electron density from electron poor to moderately electron rich as well as aryl substitution so we can tolerate ortho substituted aryl halides as well as well as reactive functionalities like this phenol, which showed exclusive CC coupling and none of the CO product, despite the pKa of that H being within range of the lutidine additive. And we again found that photosensitive groups such as this fluorinone showed improved reactivity under orange light, whereas under blue, because it does absorb blue or visible light, we saw no reactivity. And when we turned to scoping the alkyl BF3 K salts, we found that unsurprisingly, the electron rich ones worked well, which is what we predicted. But when we moved to an electron neutral paradigm, such as the benzyl BF3K, we found that the reaction was very inefficient and gave no discernible yield. However, we then further optimized the reaction by changing the additive to morpholine rather than lutidine and extending the reaction time to 48 hours. And by doing this, we were able to rescue the yield and couple sterically hindered substrates such as this ortho tolyl. And excitingly, even though we had fixed the electron neutral paradigm, we were not able to couple electron deficient BF3K salts such as the methyl ester, the chloro, or even the fluoro, even though the fluoro's Hammett parameter is very similar to that of just having a hydrogen there. And this indicates that at this point, we're outside of the redox window that the photocatalyst could access in order to oxidize the BF3K to a benzylic radical. So in summary, we have showed the first example of CSP2-CSP3 coupling with low energy light. On the reductive side and the reductive paradigm, we show a deaminative aerylation, which precedes the oxidation of a sacrificial reductant, triethylamine to generate a very reducing iridium-2 species, and a simultaneous nickel cycle traps the alkyl radical fragment from the reduction of the Kutritsky salt and oxidatively inserts into the aryl halide bond which then reductively eliminates to furnish the product and turn over the photocatalyst in one step. In the oxidative paradigm, the alkyl BF3K is first oxidized to the benzylic radical by the photoexcited catalyst, which is then trapped by the nickel co-catalyst along with the aryl bromide to again reductively eliminate and give the benzylic aerylated product. And I would first like to acknowledge my advisor, Professor Thomas Lavrobis, for his support in this project and throughout my PhD career with him. Special thanks go to Dr. Ava Bednarova and Chen Shi Lin for pioneering this work, as well as Dr. Matthew Horwitz for the opportunity to share the, with Synthesis Workshop. And the entirety of the Rovis group also has my gratitude, as do all of the collaborators at BMS for their support and their input. And finally, I would like to thank the chemistry community for their interest in this work and their attention to this talk. And thank you very much for watching. Thank you for tuning in for this Research Spotlight episode, and thank you to Catherine for a very interesting talk. If you enjoyed the episode, you can support us by subscribing and telling your peers about this podcast, and feel free to send us any questions or comments you have. Follow us on Twitter to stay up to date, and see you all next time.